This week on the Manga Bums Podcast, we continue our discussion of Kaiji starting with Datenroku, Part 3. Datenroku, Part 3. All right. Sorry we had a little bit of trouble. Um, I had to do a lead game on Pokemon Crazy, and then, like, I've been preoccupied with other things, so I was kind of, like, hesitant to even do this, but uh, we're just going to do it. So, <laughs> uh, Rinchan, why don't you take it away? Yeah, so welcome back, everybody. Um, first of all, it's the fourth episode of uh, Manga Bombs. Uh, oh, did I not? Has... Okay. Did, did I say that? It, it's, Sorry. It's fine. <laughs> no, no, it, it, it's fine. It's fine. Um... So Sonic has some thoughts, um, and he's a little like he isn't really like super ready for this podcast. Um, but it'll be fine because I, at least, I have a lot to say about uh, the start of Datenroku. And should I just take it away with my opinions of freshly reading the first fifty chapters, or do you want to say something first? Um. You you can start it off, yeah, yeah. Why don't you uh, go ahead and uh, give uh, give your thoughts on what you've read, and then uh, I'll jump in when I have any thoughts. So, first of all, uh, it's gonna be a little bit different because uh, for the first two and three episodes, um, it was easy to recap because we had the 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 anime and the show, like even Squid Game, I could just watch it through, but. This time, when I thought, oh, I can get all over Datenroku in just, like, two, three days, and I realized it's 130 chapters, and then there's Kazuya, yeah. and with around 100 chapters, I was like, no, I can't. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's just I, too I long. <laughs> it's, it's, it, and, and you have to read it. That's the difference. Like, uh, you have to read it to watch the images, to, and uh, well, it's completely different than just watching a show. Um, so... Uh, but I still have like very interesting opinions about the start. Uh, there's something I'm I'm like glad I reread the start of um, Datenroku because a lot of things like just stood out to me from from the beginning. Um, in episode two, I said um, no. In episode three, sorry, uh, when we we're talking about uh, Kaiji Part Two. Kaiji Part I, Two. I, yeah. I, yeah. Episode three. Yeah, of part I, Two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I I I immediately said like. The, the thing I liked is that you didn't expect Kaiji to uh, go to the underground and to work as a slave and uh, it, and to, like, it was a reset and it was refreshing. Um, in part three, unfortunately, I don't feel like that. And I'm not saying it's bad at all. Mm. It's still great. I still enjoy it. Um, but it starts off with, with um, Kaiji and Mikoko, like, Mikoko trying to get Kaiji to to like uh, um <laughs> to like uh, let her like lay on lay, lay on his yeah bed. do all this like cringy like boyfriend girlfriend stuff when he doesn't even want to yeah and and uh, even though in a sense it's 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 also in a way interesting refreshing it just felt to me like did Fukumoto after the success of part one and part two have the feedback that there should be some girl and some romance and mm. he... no i f i feel like it's more like uh so sakazaki mentioned Moko mikoko a lot in part two like he brought her up as like his main motivation um and so like it makes sense for kaiji to have moved in with sakazaki because he's broke and so and kai uh, and sakazaki like feels like bad for him for like um you know, he, he, like, lost all the money to Endo, so, like, he feels bad. So, uh, bad enough to, like, let him in. So, I feel like it's an, it is a natural progression for the series, and I feel like Fukumoto thought 
you know, this is where Kaiji would be next. And also I can add in some uh, comedic hijinks with uh, Kaiji not really being that tremendously fond of Mikoko <laughs> um, at the same time. That's, that's, that's what I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, now that you say it, that it, it makes sense because for me it felt off. Um, as I said, uh, part, two, part two, it's still like dark and gritty and realistic and this time when you start a show it just feels different um and mm. i still i still remember like I, what i still like is the the sakazaki talk to kaiji yeah because kaiji has been hanging around um in his home for a month a month and a half something and like he that start, yeah and he starts like He's disappointed in him because um, he isn't like working. He's just like eating there, sleeping there, spending time with his daughter. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, and he's like kind of getting sick of him. And Kaiji doesn't get it. Like Kaiji doesn't get why Sakazaki would be mad at him. Um, but I also get Sakazaki and um, he... <laughs> He, and Sakazaki is like this weird, weird way of looking at, at at the little romance between his daughter and Kaiji that he sees him as a as a as a little helpless puppy. <laughs> oh yeah, I love that image of Kaiji being a little puppy in a box. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's such a cute image. Yeah, yeah, and it's funny the way uh, he looks at it, he looks at it because uh, Kaiji, of course, looks at it a whole other way. He's like, I don't like your daughter. I hate the fact that I lost everything after the bog. Um, this is just something I can sleep at, and that's the only reason why I'm here. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just kind of... Um, Sakazaki's like... He has this uh, opinion of Kaiji that is just based purely on like his like fears. <laughs> like his, his thoughts of Kaiji are entirely based on on fear <laughs> of like what he's going to be doing like with his daughter and like he doesn't want to lose his daughter to some like freaking degenerate gambler <laughs> or something yeah <laughs> so. yeah yeah exactly um and it's uh, uh it's funny that like the contrast of how how the two characters look at the situation and um at some point something happens unexpected uh Miyoshi and Maeda are like like you don't know yet you you just see like two people in in uh, black suits like stalking the the house. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's kind of it's kind of almost a mysterious scene. Yeah, and they're afraid and 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 when Kaiji was like running out to like say probably after me, I felt like some little bit of like optimism in him like yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting another chance. <laughs> I, can, right. I can get out. Of it. And he he ran out, and he was surprised that it was uh, Miyoshi and Maeda because in part two they were his his brothers in arm. They were fighting with him. They were believing in him. Yes, and it's it's really it's, shocking, like seeing that they like have taken on this n new role, um, and like that they're now working at a casino that Tay I run. It's kind of that's already a little fishy <laughs> the fact that they you know decided to do that <clears throat> but, but but kaiji isn't even even thinking about it they right he just believes believe them he just like takes their word like at the at the surface level they say to him like hey it's not like we're joining the 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 bad guys it's we're at another casino it's just something we found and kaiji already na naive again <laughs> again trusting into people yeah um always. again getting yeah um and that's what put me off a little because to me it was like kaiji you already had something similar with furuhata and ando so yeah but this time like, it's like what, people what? that literally he saved he he was responsible for well i don't know that's not too different from furuhata and ando but it's 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 like uh it, they spent so much time together and they worked together and like they did everything together um for so long i don't know just the i guess just the period of time that he knew them for made him trust them a little bit more 
Yeah. But yeah. it is a really um, similar situation if you really break it down. Yeah, that's that's like I, I'm I'm not saying it's bad, like it's still very good. I'm just saying that's what what my my thought is I was reading it again because I'm I was like disappointed like really for Komoto you're bringing back two mo two two guys who are gonna like betray him again while while the underground even the pachinko stuff was very fresh, different from from Espoir. And this time it's like this time Kaiji's in the real world. He's back at a at a casino, and two guys who appear like he trusts into are obviously like when I'm rereading it, it's so obvious they're gonna like <laughs> fuck him mm. over. <laughs> like I mean, that's always how it is, though. Like you. Um, you reread something and you know a twist, and so like all the hints that the author has laid out throughout it are kind of uh, are kind of very apparent um, on a second reading, but they're like just vague enough that you wouldn't get it the first time. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's that's something I have to praise. Uh, that's good writing, I guess, because yeah. I didn't see it the first time I, I was reading it. Um, as you said, only only after rereading it and getting all the hints, it it's getting very obvious. Um, and like the one hint, I I kind of I'm disappointed that I didn't remember this hint was that they were in a very rundown apartment full of trash, like very un unorganized. Oh. Um. So. So what is that? Ha okay. What. What, what's well, what's well, that well, about the, your the, mind? The, well, now that I reread it, I should have realized, even though they have a job, they're still desperate for money because they mm. live like this. So I should have realized that they would be ready to to betray their old underground friend for some money because they're themselves. Yeah, in, in a tub. they're still scraping by themselves, and they're they'd be willing to um, do whatever it takes to not live that way. Kind of. Yeah. And then, then there was another, another hint, which uh, um, I missed the first time I read it is it was that uh, Miyoshi and Maeda were like thanking Kaiji the same way that Furuhata and Ando were thanking him at the ship. Like, they oh, were like yeah. when, when, when he, when he was saying like, again, like he was saying like, I will gamble, I will make the money, we split it evenly, and they had the same, like, they, they were like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank like, you, Kaiji-san, thank you, Kaiji-san. I promise yeah, to save you. Uh, but, but that, again, that's also, like, good writing that, that um, he puts, like, hints. That yeah, it's kind of a mirror <laughs> situation that he didn't make completely obvious, but when you look at it a second time, it's it's pretty clear. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, it was also um, because it's a like complete opposite of uh, Sakazaki, who was like having a nice home, who was giving Kaiji the opportunity to finally get a job, start working. Like here's like a month of of, of like you can live here and eat here. Like I just want to see you. Get your life together. Yeah. Um. Well, and and he was he was the one who was like attacking Kaiji, begging him to get out, uh, just saying like never. He even said like never come back. I just don't want to ever see you again. Right. Um. Because in his mind, it's just so. Uh, he just thinks so little of Kaiji at this point. He just thinks that he's just a lazy bum. Like I mean, because he's watched him just like lay around the house, just play video games like go out to pachinko freaking like hit on his daughter and he's just he's just had it at that point and he's like go get a job or be homeless do whatever you want to do man up and be homeless i think he says at one point yeah and uh, what i was trying to say i guess is that um kaiji should listen to that kind of people more instead of two people stalking that house <laughs> I, right? yeah true yeah just two random <laughs> like <laughs> creepy people that are like loitering around the house <laughs> even and, if he does and, know and, them. And, 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 instead of instead of going to their dirty place and as Stumber said they even had like notices of, of that 
uh, it, but he still trusts them. He still <laughs> goes like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's such, just, just such a good guy, and he just trusts people so much, and he doesn't, like, he himself would never think of betraying somebody, so it's so hard for him to imagine that other people are going to betray him, I think is what it really is. Yeah, um, and I am going to get into a hard topic, which is, Minefield Mahjong very soon. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, before well, how... that, um, I want to... <clears throat> how is that a hard topic, Sorry, necessarily? I, I... Well, it's a hard topic because it's one of my criticisms of uh, Datun Roku. Oh, really? Not necessarily because I don't know Mahjong. Like, over yeah, the years, obviously I, I learned it. <laughs> Yeah, um, but it's still a criticism. Um, but before that, I just want to say I noticed there was a change in art. I guess uh, Fukumoto get, got more free or more assistance or better digital technology, but the art definitely got better. Like the way the, the face mm. are twisting in the backgrounds, um, the art definitely got better from, from that Niroku. So that that's a praise. That's a praise, definitely. Well, yeah, I mean, he's kind of uh, made his place in in the manga industry. So like, he has more room to be able to uh, pay for more for better equipment, better artwork, better assistance, and stuff like that. So it's a natural progression. Plus, his his drawing style has just improved. Like, he's had more practice with it, which is yeah, which is like yeah, kind of yeah. how art evolves in any series. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you 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 put the right way. Um, yeah. and oh, and I should just mention. Now um, I'm gonna start. <laughs> I should just mention. Please, yeah, please go ahead. Right, it's just a little a side note. Uh, I bought Rinchan uh, a new mic. <laughs> it's in the mail. <laughs> um, so if like you hear him cutting out right now, like occasionally, but like uh, it, that'll be fixed for future episodes. Oh yeah. Well, well. Thank you for taking. <laughs> I I wanted to mention it. Like maybe in ten, fifteen minutes, I want to say thank you a lot, Sonic, for uh, buying the new mic. Uh, I can't wait for it to get here. Yeah. But you you took it. You you took the the glory. Uh, so. I took the glory. <laughs> I took the glory. Well, yeah. There's glory in uh in that sort of sort of thing. I guess. I don't know. Ah. Uh. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't want to break your train of thought. <laughs> I didn't want to break your train no, of thought, you, and you, like you, I'm you, just kind you, of. You I, I know, I know, I know. You're, you're. Um, I know that you're right now a little bit uh, busy with other stuff. Um, I, I'm just a little bit reluctant to start talking about the minefield margin, the 17 steps margin, because I'm gonna sound like. I'm gonna sound like an asshole, but I think that's one of his weakest, biggest mistakes ever. Oh, it's yeah, mis- a mistake you would call it. Okay, um, definitely a mistake. Definitely a mistake because the reason the people got into kaiji was that the games are so simple. You could like learn, like you could you could learn a game in 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 a minute, in a few minutes, you could understand the game. Yeah. Um, hmm. constricted rock paper scissor. Um, after that, the emperor card. Uh, uh, the the even like the lottery with the with the tissue box. Uh, then after yeah, that, yeah, it's all very simple. And, yeah, it makes me wonder because uh, <laughs> there was that moment where freaking like the chapter ends and uh, Muroku is like, K-k-k-k-k. you can even have fun with something like this. And Kaiji is like just dramatically staring at a box of Uno cards. And it's like, oh my God, is this going to be the game? It makes me wonder if like Fukumoto like was actually going to freaking do an Uno arc. And then the next chapter, like his editors were like, uh, Uno, are you serious? <laughs> um, or something I like that. I think they, they, they would have been some licensing issues with uh, Uno, um, but the thing is, it's it's a turn in the wrong way because, first of all, as I said, I already know Mahjong after years. Like I didn't right. learn it in a week or something. 
I, I had to I would spend say years it's, to learn Mahjong. I would say it's ultimately good, though, because it gets a lot of people into Mahjong because they want to learn Mahjong so that they can understand Kaiji, and then that enables them to read uh, the rest of Fukumoto series. So I'd say in the long run, it's a good thing. As far as, like, if it's good for the series, though, um, I mean, well, it is well, a little more complicated. Is, yeah, the problem is the problem is it's not real Mahjong. Like, yeah. it's Mahjong plus a ton of different other rules. Like, so you, you, it's not enough that you know Mahjong itself. Now you got to learn how this one versus one game works. Uh, well, and that was a mistake because Mahjong... Mahjong works in a four-man way um, where four people are playing and the, the Ricci rules, it works greatly even in Akagi when even if you don't understand it completely in Akagi, it still works. But now he was forced to kind of bring Mahjong into a one-on-one -on -one game. So as I said, not enough knowing Mahjong, but learn all these other rules. Um, yeah. And to me, that's, that, that, that's, would... a, bad, that's a bad thing. I would say it's probably like you say that it's mahjong with a bunch of other rules, but I would say it's kind of a simpler version of mahjong because you don't need to worry about chi, pon, kan. You don't need to worry about uh, like anything beyond like uh, just creating your hand, and you don't need to know tile efficiency. You don't need to know any anything like that. Um, I don't know. I felt like it was somewhat. Um. It it was somewhat like, like maybe not simpler, but it was. I would say that it, it was definitely a interesting concept, and uh, maybe he didn't execute it the best. Maybe he like, uh, uh, maybe he dragged it out too much. But I would still say it's it was an interesting concept, and the fact that it's um, it was uh, like it's a game that works in real life too, and he probably came up with it, um, like trying to. Uh, f figure out a game that would work in real uh, a way to play two player mahjong in real life between two people and it I think he like invented it and I mean you got to give him credit for that at least I'm definitely giving him credit I'm just saying um, that decision was just a like wrong turn um, for the series like he should have I'm not saying keep the Keep all of the games on a on a child level. Like I'm not saying keep them as simple as possible, but he could have picked some. Like after after like after it, you have one poker hand. You have uh, games to, which are still simple, but uh, you know they're, they're for me they're like a lot better games. Like mm -hmm. um, the the game with the Asian trio. Um, that that was a very deep psychological game, and you didn't need to read five, six chapters about the rules. You know what I mean? Though. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I get you there. Um, plus the kind of strategy of the game really just revolved around like one person cheating, and then the other person out cheating them, and then the other person out out cheating them, and just kind of stacking cheats upon cheats. It wasn't really about the game necessarily. It was about uh, like the levels of cheating that were involved. And that's kind of just the way it, that Fukumoto made it interesting. The game itself, yeah, I mean, it's it's fun, but it's um, it's definitely not as deep as regular Mahjong. It's unnecessarily complicated. That was my whole point. Um, and that's that's what I want to say. Like the way I feel that he changed because of the success of uh, Part One and Two is that I feel that I mentioned Mikoko somebody told him like hey bring, bring in some girls here bring in some romance he, like bring in that and then somebody told him uh you did akagi you did 10 uh, why don't you bring in mahjong and he was like oh, okay like he was starting to get like this feedback from people mm. around him and he, and it kind of influenced the way he wrote uh, part three in uh, that's what i assume i i, I definitely might be I, completely wrong i i i feel like i mean it's it's cool that you feel that way and that you like that's that's like what you like thought while you were reading it but I kind of feel like it's also just as plausible that you know he wanted to include Mikoko out of like wanting to continue um br like to bring back a character from part 2 and then he uh he wanted to I don't know maybe the fact that that like she was like the first 
like real major girl in the series could have been like him giving into like criticisms of like uh there's no girls in your works or something like that um and but yeah that, that, that's what i meant that, that he was starting to give in to to criticism and i repeat i i might be completely wrong about this maybe he was playing planning it all along without listening to other people but that's how it felt to me rereading uh at least like the first half of of uh that and roku it just that that's the vibe, the vibe i got yeah but you and don't have to like, listen to me like these guys in the chat are saying um uh like mahjong is very well known in japan pretty much everybody starts playing mahjong like once they're in middle school or so so it's it's not like uh, that's why like they don't explain mahjong in akagi or kaiji really um like that's why uh, we needed to add that like freaking like five page document like listing out all the rules of do of mahjong to give you a basic grip on it because like um in Japan, it was written for a Japanese audience, and in Japan, like, pretty much, like, a lot of people know how to play Mahjong. Not everybody, but, like, it's very well known. Uh, I guess you could also say that there's a decent chunk of people who don't know how to play Mahjong, even in Japan, though. Um, no, so... no, 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 Tembo is right here, um, but in that case, I would have to assume that Fukumoto is not aware of uh, of the audience outside of Japan um which are into into kaiji and well, his work or yeah but you got to you got to remember care. you got to remember that uh kaiji part 3 got like there the anime wasn't even available until 2005 and i want to say Ka kaiji part 3 came out before uh the anime aired I don't know exactly when it came out. Someone else could probably answer that clearer, but if it it might have been the case that like um like he never even fathomed that Kaiji would like reach a like worldwide audience at the time that he wrote part 3. So you know, take that yeah, as you Yeah, I, 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 I guess we will never be sure unless uh, Fukumoto himself makes a statement and says why he decided to pick that game. Um, now talking to you and reading the comments uh, from the people, I'm kind of, yeah, yeah, I, I can see it like that. Fukumoto wasn't aware that uh, it would explode so much, even in the West, um, that he just assumed 90% of the audience is going to stay Japanese so I can just bring in Mahjong. Uh, I, I can see that, yeah. I can see that too, um, definitely. And maybe maybe it's his passion. Like, he worked on uh, Akagi 10 and a lot of, like, manga stuff. Uh, I mean, Mahjong stuff in, in his manga. Um, and I can definitely see that he wanted to bring in a game he loves himself into, into Kaiji. I just thing it didn't really work as well um as the other games sure and, uh, and what do we talk about like what parts of it you didn't think worked well like what parts of it do you think like kind of fell flat for you um i didn't really like muraoka um oh you didn't uh, well yeah no, he's kind didn't. of he's very similar to he's he's just a basic villain who's just very like slimy and schemy and just like kind of a a nasty person you know he doesn't really get very much development besides yeah you find out that like a, he doesn't have like a wife that, yeah th thank you for putting it in the perfect words just a slime bag because uh in the last podcast in the last episode we could talk for like 20 minutes about uh, tonegawa endo about hyodo we can talk about all of them for a long time because they're interesting in their own way but Muraoka just felt so flat to me, just so... Uh, like, yeah, it's kind of like... It, okay, I do remember, like, the, the moment that I saw him, I was, like, kind of like, is this really, like, someone that we're... Like, we're not going to spend an entire, bo like, an entire arc with this guy, are we? He seems so generic, you know? Um, But at uh, the same Fukumoto time, the there's some people out Fukumoto there that really the like him. Job. I believe that definitely, and uh, Fukumoto did a good job by bringing Kazuya in very very quickly um in right. the middle not even in the middle in the first like third of the game oh yeah he was the, he was the star of the entire arc he was like he was like what you were 
still reading it for, like to find out who he was, like what he was about, like why he was there, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, and there, there's a part of of my film Ajong where I was thinking, I wish Kazuya was playing with him right now, <laughs> you know, not mm. with Oka. Uh, yeah, but he did eventually get his match with like that was the whole. That was everything. Like, I, I have to assume that, like, the reason that Fukumoto wrote it that way is to make you want Kaiji to play Kazuya and to make uh, make you invest oh, into yeah. their oh. match. Oh, yeah. That, that might be then some really genius writing I didn't think about. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, because, uh, like, he is the main attraction there. And, like, you know, we're so interested in him that, like, we're, uh, like even though we wind up spending the next two parts pretty much just focusing on him like we're not we're invested because he's such like a mysterious character that we've like that we want to know more about in a way yeah not not, not yeah not not now it makes sense uh when we <laughs> sit down and talk um it it makes sense that that the uh, and it's actually very good writing that he would like bring in Kazuya and you wishing that uh, to see some confrontation with Kazuya and then it actually happens and it pays off um, especially in one poker hand um, it pays off so much and he also had time to um, characterize um, Kazuya because he comes in with this girl he comes in with girls he, yeah he, two girls he, yeah yeah he throws money at uh, Kaiji like here I'm gonna lend you money I don't know if Kaiji was aware that he was, was um connected with with Tei that he was the son of uh, Hyodo. Well, that's one of the big reveals. Uh, that's uh, that's like, you know, a big like jaw-dropping moment when he says, "I know you know my dad." Uh, Hy Hyodo uh what's his first name? <laughs> uh Takahashi. Doesn't matter. It's <laughs> something like that. I I I, I don't or, know. No, Ka <laughs> Kazu Kazu something. Kazu I forget. Kaz Kazutaka, that's it. Kazutaka. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> okay, I got it. Well, Risen got it too, but... Yeah. Yeah, all of the freaking Hyodo family line is starts with Kazu. Even the freaking uh, maid is named Kazue. <laughs> so. But yeah, that's... that's an that's interesting a detail I've ne never noticed. <laughs> oh, you never noticed that? Yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't help but notice it since I had to translate it. <laughs> but, uh... Oh yeah, that's that's true. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Uh. So I guess. Uh, th should we just start talking about Kazuya? Because <laughs> like that's kind of like that's really what we really need to talk about. That's what's gonna like really make it interesting is like talking about Kazuya, going through like his entire mindset, and I think literally we can fill up like an entire like two and a half hours just talking about Kazuya <laughs> pretty much because he's such <sighs> I, I and it, not only is he an interesting character but I feel like you and I are specifically going to disagree on like what he's about um just based on what we've talked about in the past um yeah we talk, we talked very very little about uh, Kazuya and I personally am very excited to hear what you think about it why do why you want to talk about him so much Right. Uh, because uh, for me, for me, either characters are a lot more interesting. Uh, mm. For me, Kazuya personally wasn't that interesting. I thought he was you a good didn't character. Think so. Okay. No, I'm not say like I'm not saying that there's nothing interesting. Like there's so much, so many things interesting about Ka Kazuya, but I, I never saw him as a character which I would like think about when I'm not reading the manga or watching the show. That that I would think about him. That there, there's something deeper. So this episode, I, I hope you you can enlighten me and uh, tell me something sure. you you know about Kazuya, and especially because as you said, you're the one who translated it, so you probably have a better insight than me. So this episode, I'm gonna learn from you. Well, something that I think is really interesting about Kazuya is that he makes he's he's kind of likable on the surface, right? He's very like he's very like buddy buddy like he pals around with you he says hey man like what's going on like oh you, you're in trouble there well what why don't i help you out you know and he's very like um he's very charismatic he's very uh enthusiastic 
Um, but deep, but like once you get to know him for any significant period of time, then you kind of learn more about him. You kind of like dig below the surface and you find that there's like some really, really dark, twisted stuff that he's hiding behind his like his like very friendly, charismatic exterior. That's to me like that kind of charismatic exterior that he like shows to people that he shows to Kaiji and everybody that he meets. I feel like that's kind of just like a like something that he's pretending to have like not pretending to like I mean he has it but he's he's like kind of just putting that up at a, as a front just like to make people like him more. Whereas like if you really dig deep into his mind and you figure out like what makes him tick and what he's really interested in it's really dark and twisted and you it's it's really hard to um like really so okay um i'm i'm, I'm just, I, I i like listening to you talk about this i'm just going to jump in shortly about while we're at uh, the way kazuya acts i think it's more like a tool that he learned from his father um like a tool which you learn when you're like this uh, spoiled rich brat and you have to take over the, the, the family business. And you just learn like it naturally how to act this way, even though yeah. you like, I don't think he's like putting any effort into, into being like appearing to be nice. I don't think he's even like thinking about like, how do I appear nice? It's just something. Right. He, he's he, practiced he, he, it so much and he's just developed this personality. Yeah. yeah. Um, throughout his life. But the thing about Kazuya, yeah. the thing about Kazuya is he doesn't trust anybody. He doesn't, uh, like, he thinks, like, that everybody around him is always putting up, like, some kind of phony, um, fake, like, show of, like, kindness or something, because that's what he's used to in his life. He's always used to people, like, sucking up to him and, like, asking him for money and, like, you know, uh, just, like, pretending to be his friend so that they can get something out of him. Because that's kind of who he, who uh, he is. He's, like, this spoiled rich kid that has really nothing to offer except his money. Um, he doesn't really... Uh, I mean, he's he's charming and he's kind of funny, but as far as, like... I don't know, like, as far as, like, his personality goes, he he, he does have, like, a, a really dark t personality, and he's he's kind of a very mean uh, person at the same time. Like, he's not a nice guy. He's a very mean person. And, like, he, like, the more you get to know him, the more you watch him, like, just taking pleasure in other people's suffering. Um, you watch him taking pleasure in other people's pain, and you realize just how much of a sadist he really is. And I would say that that sadism kind of comes from a place of, like, he is used to, like, never, never being popular he's used to kind of well he's popular in a kind of a phony sense he's popular in the sense that like people see him for yeah for who his father is they see they see him for like you know your father is hyodo um uh kazutaka the like chairman of tei incorporated he's like a really noble rich man who is you know so wealthy beyond anyone's wildest expectations and you're just his son. That's all you are to us. You're just his son. And, like, you know, we'll be nice to you out of fear for your father. But he's just so used to people, like, kind of treating him almost like he's... He's just kind of... what? How would you even describe it? He's just kind of and like this... Um, that's, like, the best... Like, everything you said, like... That's the best way to like. That, that's why it felt so great. Uh, Akagi versus um, I not Akagi. Holy shit! I mean Kaiji yeah. versus um, Kazuya. Um, it's because it's it's totally again totally opposites. Um, as we talked before, um, Kazuya never had to work or worry about money in his life. He's right. just like he had everything. Like he had a golden spoon in his, like he was born. Yeah, and he was born with a golden spoon hand, in his mouth. Yeah, yeah. And Kaiji, on the other hand, is somebody who had to figure out a way to to 
just to survive. So while Kaiji's mind is focused on surviving or making something out of him in any way, um, Kazuya is so spoiled, doesn't have any worries. Um, okay, people disrespected him, right? Not disrespect, like didn't look up to him as they look up to, like let's say, Hyodo, because Hyodo. Uh, I assume Hyodo made his riches or money himself. I right. assume he wasn't born with it. We don't know yet. Maybe we'll learn about it later. But um, what can Kazuya's brain really like focus on? And I, I think this is the start where we're gonna like disagree on Kazuya yeah. because I'm gonna like defend him a little, and you're gonna like like keep talking about the way he's like totally like. Um, disgusting um like what other what other things could have his his brain be focused about or thought about instead of like just looking at people as like uh, little puppets little like pieces in a game and uh, the only thing where he thought he can like show something or makes is like in a novel like that he can write something mm -hmm. uh, that's yeah that's, but the things the things that he chooses to write novels about are like he has it in his brain that humans at the end of the day are just like they they put on these like airs of like you know I want to get to know you but only to get something out of you I want to um I want to like be nice to you but only to hide my deepest darkest fantasies like he he thinks that like um all of humanity has this kind of like this almost this demon that's hiding inside of them uh, inside of them and like it's kind of almost his goal in life to drag that demon out of them by putting them in these life or death situations and forcing them to choose if they want to die or if they want to betray their best friend and like s screw up everything that like they have ever known about this person that they've known for so long whether that's like his novel of like the boyfriend and girlfriend that like um, like the girlfriend eventually like, you know, just betrays the boyfriend out of self uh, and, and kind of almost reveals at the same time that she's never really liked him and that like everything that she's done before has been kind of like um, pretend and make believe. And I feel like that Kazuya is so set in his ways that he's not open to um, hearing about any any like real genuine acts of kindness that humanity is capable of and that he really... Um, he just, like, that's why he's so revolted when he sees Kaz uh, Kaiji, Mario, and Chang, like, developing this genuine friendship so quickly. He's just like, this has to be fake. This can't be real. This does not fit in with my mindset. I do not understand this. This doesn't make any sense to me. You know, the fact that they're just, like, getting along so well immediately because Kazuya is just... He's just given into the darkness inside of him, and he believes that there's just this darkness that is pretty much overpowering everybody, that it's his duty to drag out of them. Um, would, would, you, would you say that um, Kazuya is creating these uh, games and situations um, out, of, out of insecurity, because he's mm. actually not, not really sure if, if if he's, he's right. So he's like trying to convince himself, like, let's watch people betray each other. And then after they do, they, because of a uh, fucking ridiculous situation, he's like, yeah, I was right. And then he keeps doing it because. Right. It's to not, verify not, his not, own. Yeah, exactly. It's to verify his own insecurities. It's to be like, well, I'm just kind of a phony person. I just put on, you know, these kinds of uh, errors because everybody or else, everybody else around me does that. And, like, you know, there's no reason for me to believe that there's genuine kindness and goodness in the world when I've never experienced it. Everybody has always been, like, like cruel and, well, not cruel, but, like, just phony around me. And, like, he, it's it's kind of like when he sets up these games and he sees the outcome that he was expecting, he gets a little excitement from it and he real and and he kind of takes that to mean that he's justified in thinking about humanity the way he does that humanity is just basically a bunch of like um 
I'll put it like this, like a bunch of like rats kind of like scurrying around and trying to like outdo each other to get to the top. And like that there's no there's no like community among humanity. There's always just all that humanity is, is just in his eyes is just like this, um, this group of freaking animals that are trying to like that are out to kill each other and like, um, you know, like outdo each other and like. All that's that's what lies at the base of humanity, and the only thing that people see in the world is that like fake make believe like I'll pretend to be your friend in order to get in or to like you, in order or rather in order for you to like me more. Um, just I I never thought about this, um, but I just had like an uh, interesting question in my brain. Do you think that some part of Kazuya that even he himself doesn't know that he has that he's actually hoping to be proven wrong yes uh the... yes. yes just yes. okay <laughs> okay then then go on about it <laughs> okay yeah no i do i think that um i think that he secretly wants um i think that he secretly wants to be proven wrong but but it's so deep down that he doesn't even realize it it's kind of like it's this thing that humanity um it's this thing that humanity just has as its base. It's this thing that like if you're doing something wrong um then you kind of secretly want someone to catch you out on it because you know deep down in your heart that what you're doing is wrong, you know? And um it's it's kind of the way that like uh, like someone in the chat mentioned uh, serial killers. It's kind of the way that they kind of like leave a trail of bread com- breadcrumbs behind them for the police to catch because they like part of it is because they want to like leave their calling card. But also another part of it, I have to imagine, is that they know what they're doing is wrong and they don't want to do it anymore. So they want the police to come and stop them. It's kind of the same same sort of situation we have with Kazia where he's he's doing all these like evil, immoral things, but he... At the same time, he knows deep down in heart, in his heart, that like there has to be more than what he's experiencing. But he just he just keeps getting proven right time and time again, and that just builds up his ego and builds up his sense of um, sense of uh, just that he's you know right and that he's right about his view of, of the world. And that's kind of why he phrases it to Kaiji as like, "Here's my truth." Here is what I believe. This is this is my truth of how the world is, and we'll put my truth against your truth, and we'll see whose truth comes out on top. Because he believes so strongly in his truth that he's willing to put it up against Kaiji's truth, in one part because he believes that his truth is um, the ultimate truth and that it's all there is, but it, in another way, it's also because he thinks that uh, like he kind of wants his truth to be proven wrong. Um, because, you know, then there would be hope for humanity, because if his, if Kazuya's truth is right, then we're fucked, we're doomed as a species, because, like, you know, we're never gonna get anywhere, and I have to, like, my biggest counter-argument to Kazuya's truth would be that if humanity is just like that, if humanity is just all competing to get to the top, How did we get this far as a species? How did we evolve this far as a human race? Um, If all that we are is just a collection of people, you know, going going out to get each other and just trying to, you know, get stuff from each other and competing and, like, backstabbing each other all the time, there has to be some kind of ingrained morality in humanity, even even apart from some kind of religion, even apart from anything else um, that, uh, like, even apart from anything like that, it, there has to be some basic level of morality where human beings just kind of know that this is good and this is bad, and they, and furthermore, that they want, there that there are, like, genuine human interactions that take place on a day-to-day basis where people genuinely want to know more about each other and they and they grow to like each other and uh, they want to cooperate with each other. Because that's basically what it is about, is cooperation versus uh, betrayal. And Kazuya is all, all about, like, human beings are all about betrayal, whereas Kaiji is more like human beings are all about cooperation. And that's really the big, um, that's really the big, uh, like, 
duality that is explored in Kazuya Hen is like the difference between um, whether human beings like cooperate when they're left on their own or whether they betray each other. Um, I would say I that's what it's really about. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree on 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 that um, view of life. Definitely, I agree hundred percent. We're gonna disagree later on about uh, if you can excuse Kazuya for his actions or sure. not. Uh, <laughs> so there's gonna be a little bit uh, like some action later, but the, right now what you said is absolutely right. Um, and even though at the beginning I was critical of uh, that. Um, just remember, I only got to like chapter 52, I think, uh, rereading it because yeah. the last time I read that Roku was like, at least like seven, eight, even probably even more, like probably even more than 10 years ago that, that I read the first time, like really? as, as 10 I was years ago, your, your, more, more like, like I was, I was following the, the releases as they were coming out. Like I was so impatient for a new chapter to come out um and that's what you did um and thank you for that um and i just want to ask do you think that kazuya is a victim of being the child of hyodo and being in part of his company and this um that if he was born let's say to a normal family that he would have more hope and he wouldn't like be so pessimistic about humanity that he would believe more in people like Kaiji, let's say. Um, do, would you say that he's just a victim of being the child of Hyodo? Not just. Um, he is, in some sense, like his life has been developed that way, right? He, uh, the, like his. Uh... His, the way he believes about the world is definitely shaped by the way he grew up and the, the circumstances like surrounding him as he like gained his adulthood, right? Like there definitely is that aspect to his character. But what I would say is Kazuya's critical, critical mistake is that he never takes the time to consider that you know, his perceptions of how other people behave might be just delusions. He never stops to consider if the fact that he thinks that other people are always out to betray each other and get, and backstab each other, and that's all the humanity is, or it definitely is shaped by, like, the way that other people around him interact, but I still think, even with that, like, if he just could try to get to know another person on a on a real level if at any point in his life he had stopped along the way and like genuinely tried to like just said to a person like listen man i know i'm the son of hyodo i know i'm the son of hyodo be real with me do you like what like i want to get to know you put aside everything that i am put aside everything that like i that you think about me i want to get to know you Sonic, Sonic, I'm gonna stop you for a second. That's the problem. Those people, even if he did that, could they? Would they? Would they really like tell him what they feel? They would be afraid of him. Everybody was afraid of him because he's the son of Kyoto. So, was there like really ever a chance for him to have like a heart to heart uh, conversation with somebody? That's that's my question. Like, I did he ever? Did he really have a choice? I feel like he had to have had a choice at some point, like throughout his, throughout his life. Like you're telling me he went through like, like, I think it was stated in Kazuya Hen that he's like 17 or 18 or something like that. that. I mean, he's young, but it's not like, like he didn't have a chance in his life to ever like meet somebody that like, like one thing he could do is he could go out and find somebody that didn't know who he was. Right. He could put on normal clothes. He could put up, put on street clothes. And he, like, if, here's an experiment he could have done before he went to the freaking death games. Here's an experiment he could, have, he could have done first. He could have put on normal street clothes and he could have gone out into the comic public and just found somebody to talk to. And he could have just tried to interact with them and see if he could, like, 
if he could understand them if and if he wanted to know more about them and um see that but he kind of chose not to he he never really tried he never really thought of that because in his mind it was always just he was so convinced and like Rissen is saying it's it's something that was ingrained in his mind since childhood right it's something that was ingrained in his mind since childhood because he had that misunderstanding where um Sophie uh, so, uh like his mother Sophie like you know didn't save him and chose to save his big brother instead when he like fell over the ship and he took that to mean oh she doesn't like me she doesn't really like me she just she's just pretending to like me and that's hard i understand that um and people do have that kind of thing happen in their life but it's just like if somebody if anybody had just like if Kazuya had just given it a chance and just gone out to somebody and asked them like uh, and just like not even told them who he was but just you know explained to him his view on life that like I think he would have been able to get out of his like mindset of like humanity is evil and like been able to see humanity for its good parts too. I think that he just kind of chose not to do that because he was so resentful against all of humanity and against his upbringing and everything um because he was just so uh, he just never even stopped to consider it because part of him just like wanted to take his vengeance out on humanity and i think that's really what lies at the heart of kazuya in particular is just this this like feeling of needing to get back at humanity for all the the pain and suffering that he perceives humanity has caused him throughout his life and it just is so sad that, like, nobody ever... Like, because that's the way that you break a delusion, right? No matter what kind of delusion it is, you have to go and you have to talk to somebody about it, like, one-on-one, -on -one, straight up, without, without any strings attached. And you have to figure out, like, like what they think and, like, like, present your argument the best you can and see if they have any comeback to it. And I just don't think that he ever really tried to do that. He just constantly, like, was just building up more evidence for his case. And until he met Kaiji, he really n never did that. I, I get your point, but at the same time, it's like blaming blaming people who, who are basically have a very different kind of life. Um, basically bl blaming them, saying like, oh, why didn't this... Uh, heroin heroin addict mm. stopped taking why 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 didn't they find a uh, why 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 did they why why didn't they just uh, work a honest life and 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 um just succeed like why didn't they work hard why didn't they find a way to why didn't they do it and to me it's like it's a damaged person and like it's I'm like expecting like somebody who is sick to to just get better by themselves um if my question would be why wasn't there somebody in Kazuya's life who 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 approached him um and like challenged his his opinion um why why wasn't like if if if, if any of the ti workers anybody if anybody came to him and said like hey why are you like this um try thinking different than he might have but expecting somebody alone without anybody else's feedback to just get better or realize the truth it's i i i disagree strongly yeah. about this and that's fine um i feel like with a heroin addict it's it's different because heroin is an addiction right and heroin is like a psychological addiction um but, but uh, yeah i like we should put that aside like ignoring that so what you what what you're getting at is that like you're you're talking about like like let's let's picture somebody that just like is shaped by their like shaped by their surroundings and like they never get better and they're always just as sick as as they have been and um i guess i would say that you can't really blame the person for not doing that but you can definitely like at some point in Kazuya's life, he could have, uh, like, 
like most people don't do what he does is the thing. Like, uh, like at some point in Kazuya's life, he could have like stopped and questioned, like if what he was doing was really right. And uh, I feel like, I don't know, man. No, I'm, look, yeah, I like, like that's, that's what I meant when I said we we're going to like argue a little, not, not argue, I mean, like have different opinions, but that's the whole point. Like. I, I really dislike this kind of thinking where you just say, why didn't he, why didn't he, why didn't he? But then if you sit down and think about it, like, could they really have thought like that? Because the brain of that person is already occupied and already shaped in a way where it's hard to have this um, inspiration to say, I'm going to question everything. Are. I, it is. I, I, I just don't see it happening. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's um it's just really hard for me to believe that there's just they're just like because there's people like that in real life that wind up doing horrible things um just because they had like a like a really bad upbringing and it's just it's it's you can understand how they got there. Like, I, I don't question that you can understand, like, how Kazuya got to where he is. And you can... And you can't really blame him for what he did. And and you're right, it's kind of like a... It is kind of like... Ass assuming too much to assume that he could have, like, stopped at any point that he wanted to. But... There's just... I, I know, why I know did he have to mean, take it that far mean. at the very end? You know, why did he have to go uh, know, so I, far I, in pursuit of his truth? I, I and I know that's I completely get. What you're I know I, that's I know still mean, all, like, along the lines of like, why did he do this? But it just, it just, <sighs> there's just something so like that I just can't understand about a person who does that, right? About a person who um just get so wrapped up in their own delusions that they're willing to go so far to I, achieve like just a, just a sense of inner I peace of what they're doing is right. I, I completely, I like, I completely get what you mean. Um, and how you feel. Um, this is kind of tying in with the discussion we had about the uh, Vashizu. It and is. Yeah. You asked me, yeah, it, you asked me in that podcast, like, do I excuse Vashizu for the horrible right. things he did and I told you I don't excuse him but I don't also see him as some something like I can understand how how he came to be the way the, and I don't have any expectation like expectations that he alone would would make this realization that he's a horrible person like you definitely need somebody Somebody, you need somebody yeah. in your life to tell you, look, I'm your friend, I like you, and the way you are behaving is, like, just not right. And then those people might listen and kind of think, and that might inspire them to try other things out, as you said. Why didn't Kazuya um, put on some street clothes and just check out humanity? Like, you need somebody to tell you. I. I it's a different kind of looking at life. I just don't believe believe that people alone, like if you're alone, you don't have a lot of power. You you can't really do much in life. But if if you have somebody, anybody to 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 talk to you, to tell you, listen, man, this is this is this is disgusting. This is wrong. Like stop it. Think right. about it. That might like shake them up to 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 just like start the thought process otherwise they'll be stuck in the same cycle of thinking the way they they have been thinking their whole life because nobody nudged them nobody like shook them up nobody said stop it man you know yeah yeah you're right and um i think that is a message that needs to get out to people more is that if you're feeling so if, if you're feeling a certain way and you really feel strongly that like like the world is like out to get you and like 
like nothing like the the hu- humanity side or any any kind of delusion like that i feel like the message that needs to be portrayed to people more is that you need to talk to people about it you can't just bottle it up inside or else you're going to end up like kazia and once you end up like kazia it's not and it's not just a fictional thing there's there's people in the real world that do take things like really far in the pursuit of like trying to figure out um or not even trying to figure out but trying to like take revenge on the world by trying to take vengeance on this world that they perceive as oppressing them and you know the th- the fucked up thing is that a lot of the times they have points you know it's not like Kazuya just like is making up stuff out of you know out of his uh you know where you know it, he has evidence to back up what he believes you know and that just makes the delusion all the more stronger in his mind and when i'm talking about delusions i uh, should i even go into this i don't think it's re- no it's not really relevant to talk about what a delusion is no i'm not going to go there but um all i'm saying is that like you really like people like him really need to find somebody to talk to about their um what they what they believe and how they perceive to be persecuted in the world and stuff like that and it's just really sad that there's one that there's not that message going on in the world and two that a lot of times even if you do go out and find somebody to talk to a lot of times you might convince them because you have like points that you're um that that you believe because i don't another thing about kazuya is like i think that he probably is so secure in his beliefs that he has like talked to other people about them and he has convinced them right and that's why he is able to publish a book about this stuff is because it's like a doubt that exists in people's minds so yeah, because they're not like completely insane people. It's not right. like he's just purely evil. It's uh, that that was another point we talked in the first po- first podcast yeah. that I, I I just said I can't believe that somebody would go out and just wreck society, people make trouble or like be be an asshole or be terrible to other people just because of the sake of it. Uh there has to be some kind of very misguided logic inside their brain where it makes sense and then yeah. there's people who who had like a, let's say innocent life a very like let's say a life where they weren't very challenged to think about things and then they meet people like that they meet people like Kazuya and then like oh this this, this makes yeah, sense this, this guy knows what's brain. going on you know they they know so little about the world that they believe in what Kazuya is saying and he's almost kind of like their guiding light, almost. And that's that's honestly how like cults start, you know. That's how cults begin is by like a, a like someone at the top that like has like however misguided they may be, rational justifications for everything that they believe in, and like they they have points and they have like reasoning and like it get there is like a you can reason just about any position that you believe in like there are points that you can make about um just about any anything you can believe in whether that they are ultimately true or not and you know you have to like what what you really have to have as a human being is a critical brain that thinks about like thinks about stuff that other people are saying to you and questions them or else like you'll be sucked along into something really dark and nefarious and that's that's sadly a contradiction because um, just a few moments ago I was talking about how somebody needed to tell Kazuya that he like that he's terrible, and as you said, if you are critical of like even even if one of the Tai guys he came up to him and said. Look, man, don't do this. It's 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 crazy. Stop! You're hurting people. And then you say, a moment ago, like you have to be critical. So Kazuya is being critical. 
Like, why is this TI guy telling me this? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not saying that ultimately, like, uh, that's all that you need is a critical mind. I'm saying that, like, that's important to distinguish what's really right from what's really wrong, you know? Um, I'm not saying that, like, you know, the fact that... Uh, sure, like, if, if a TI guy had come up to Kazi and said, like what you're doing is wrong, like, he might have come back, like, Kazuya probably would have come back with justifications for why what he's doing is right, and then, you know, the Teiagun would have, like, backed down because, you know, he's the son of Hyodo. So. Is, 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 is the solution that the people just need to listen to their heart more, however corny this sounds, <laughs> um, they need, like, if, if, if a little part of Kazuya was, like, just, Say like, yeah, this guy might be right. Like, you need to listen to people. Like, you're, you're, you're not a, like, you're not. How do I, how do I even say? It? Like, you're not God. You don't understand right. everything. You, you need to listen to people. People, if they, if they tell something to you, it, there, there's like some, there's some message. There's something behind it. Like, let's, yeah. let's, let. let's. Let's forget cults and evil people and bad people trying to con you into a way to uh, for you to to be part of their organization. But if you can feel it, if somebody has like just a good message to you, like they yeah. they honestly want to see you like improve, um, you can feel it. Like listen to the the smallest part of your brain where. If you hear a honest message, just listen to it. Think about it. Right. I suppose. Yeah. It's it's uh. It it is really hard to, because uh, Kazuya did eventually get an honest message from Kaiji. You know that was what the entire part four and part five was about. You know, um, is like Kaiji getting through to Kazuya and not even really saying much like he he did have that big moment where he was like um all you really want is just some friends and that made Kazuya like tear up and like yell at him and be like no you don't know that why do you know you don't know that you know and stuff like that um so Kazuya did have that moment in his life where like somebody namely Kaiji came to him and like honestly like questioned what he believed and you know i feel i have to imagine that like kaiji was kind of like at a loss for how to combat kazuya's like beliefs because he just kaiji just didn't have like the the mental wherewithal to like directly challenge all of his um beliefs like point for point you know he didn't have the mer- uh, the mental wherewithal to um like just like because he wasn't that like convicted in his beliefs that's just the way that kaiji grew up you know he just kind of like grew up always believing in people and always believing in humanity and trusting humanity is good and that's like something that has been proven in kaiji's life is that's also not true it's not that humanity is always good and that they're always trustworthy and that there's you know you can believe everybody but at the same time, it's also, you know, Kazuya is not right. And the fact that, you know, humanity is always bad and evil and like, you know, they're, everybody's out to get each other. There's a middle ground that they kind of come to over the course of part five or, and even part four, that they come to this middle ground and they um, come to this, like, not an understanding, but they kind of like give each other reason to think differently about the world. And... um You know, that's really what has to happen to prevent a person from turning out that way, I have to imagine, is is someone needs to come to them and, like, stand up to them and challenge what they believe in, or else they're just going to keep spiraling down and down and down. And, you know, the reason I kind of wanted to talk about this today, I'm going to be, I'm going to have a moment of honesty here, is because I kind of felt myself spiraling down that pit of like believing what Kazuya said you know I myself kind of had this this like period in my life where I kind of like was thinking like oh humanity is just fake and they're phony but I had like like at a certain point I had 
I came to realizations, and I met people. I met genuine, honest, good people that really believe, um, that, that really want to know you, and that really want to understand you, and really want to, um, find a connection with you, and care about you, and cooperate with you, and all of this stuff. And really, the reason that I wanted to talk about Kazuya so much today was because, you know, I don't want people to look at Kazuya as somebody that is justified, right? I don't want, like, because it's not really spelled out clear enough in the manga, right? If you just look at the manga as it is, you might think, like, Ka Kaiji, you know, oh, he's just, like, naive, and then is the one that's really right, but what I really want to express to people is that, you know, Kazuya has his reasons for believing the way he does. But there's more to life than what he expresses, right? There's more to it. And it's not just about humanity backstabbing and, like, you know, just being constantly competitive. Like, you can't, you can't deny that there are people out there that are like that. And Kaiji, as a series, does a great job of identifying those people and, like, putting them in, in the spotlight and revealing who they are. But I... At the same time, what I really want to express to people is that that's not all there is. That there are, like, it, you might have to go seek them out, but there are genuine, honest, nice, like, people that really care about, like, other people and want to cooperate with people and want to be their friends and want to, like, see them better themselves. And really... If in a perfect world, I wish that everybody was like that. I I feel like it's really a sad state of affairs that Kazuya has so much, so many points, so many things to point to and, and be like, look at this aspect of humanity. Isn't this disgusting? Everybody's like that, you know? And and that's that's the way he twists it, is, is that like, look at this, that's how everybody is. But that's not actually how it is. It's more like, um, there's like, really good, genuine, honest, great aspects of humanity that he just chooses to overlook in pursuit of his truth. And, you know, it, it, that's really the bottom line of what I wanted to talk about with, with Kazuya is, like, you can, you can, uh, like, I, think I about what he I, says... I but you can't like believe uh, it I, in your heart, you know. You can you you have to think about what he says, take it with a grain of salt, and then like look at the good parts of humanity as well. I I get like one hundred percent. I get everything you said in the last few minutes. Um, and to be honest, when I was reading um, Kazuya Hen the first time, I felt a little bit like you. I was like, in a way, like agreeing with him. Right, the way he looked at, at life. Yeah. Um. And I, I think it just took some years to, to, as you said, meet like some really genuine good people who care about other people who are just good, and that that shakes your mind. And I changed completely because. In the years when I was reading um, for the first time uh, Kazuya Hen and One Poker Hen, um, I was a little asshole myself. I was mm. looking down on people. I was. Yeah. I, I definitely was. Uh, um, but, yeah, but I, I had a little bit of that going on too, yeah. But after you meet like, these genuinely good people and they just talk to you, and I am very sure that none of my um again with this none of my ex-girlfriends will ever listen to this podcast i'm mm -hmm. definitely sure but i'm grateful to them because when we sat down and when we talked honestly i realized that that's not how it works and they were right. kind to me and and i changed and nowadays when i look at kazuya i also like despise him as you um but we're probably going to get back to some philosophy that I don't like to label people as evil. <laughs> Again, well, sure. As in, <laughs> as in the first episode. Right. Um, 
yeah, I mean, we can, we can talk about that. Um, I would say that, uh, I would say that, like, after a certain point, like, nobody is born evil, right? Nobody is born evil. But after you re pass a certain threshold, once you, once you pass a certain, like, point in your actions, like, once you've done something that is just so reprehensible and unforgivable, that's the point that you become evil, in my mind. Um, because once you've done something that's so wrong and reprehensible, I just feel like a human being who has done something like that, at that point, they have no, like, um no like feeling in their heart of like oh i can't do this i can't do that i like something changes inside of them once they've passed that certain threshold and they no longer like care about the outcomes of their actions you know um it's it's it it is unusual for a person to reach that stage but there definitely are people that not only um not only I would define as evil, but also, like, they themselves embrace being evil. And, like, they they take pride, almost, in being evil. And, a, and an example of that that I would give would be, uh, do you know about the Night Stalker? Um, from not Los really, Angeles? Um, not really, but uh, I'd like to hear about it, yeah. Well, the Night Stalker was a guy who... Um, he, uh, well, I don't even really want to speak all of the, like, evil things that he did, but essentially he would just kill for the fun of it. He would just kill people for the fun of it and just, just because he wanted to. And he did, like, it, you can even say, like, that the Night Stalker himself, he had a very, like, troubled childhood. He had, like, a, a, a like, problems with his parents. He had, like, um, you know, there was gun violence in the home. There was, um... Uh, there was like, uh, you know, and he went into like, um, illicit drugs, like, uh, like meth and all sorts of like, you know, really dangerous substances. Um, and I would just, uh, the, the reason that I bring up the Night Stalker is because he embraced being evil himself. Like he would have like a freaking pentagram and a 666 tattooed on his hand. And he would like flash that as po at police guards and like look them in the eyes and be like, look at how, look how evil I am, you know? And he would, he just, that became part of his personality, right? Like that's kind of what I want to, that I just want to use that as an example of how a person can get to a point in their life where they themselves just like they wouldn't like if you ask them like are you an evil person they would be like yeah I am I'm proud of it you know they there are people in the in this world who get to a certain point where they just become evil you know and and it, it's it's hard to define exactly where that point is but like I said before I would say that the point someone crosses over from being a good person to an evil person is the point that they do something so reprehensible and unforgivable that even they realize that there's just no turning back and now they just are this way they're just you know they like they don't care about doing right or wrong anymore because like normal well-adjusted people they have this feeling in their heart that like when they're about to do something that's wrong, they kind of stop and they pause and they're like, do I really want to do this? Is this really the right thing to do? What will, what will my life look like if I do this, you know? And it's kind of like before you do something like that, you know, you're a normal, good, well-adjusted human being. But after you do something like that, you're evil and you just can't, you can't prevent there's no turning back from that point once you reach that point. So, and characters like Kazuya and Washizu, I would say, are prime examples of characters that just embrace that aspect of themselves. Like, I feel like if you asked Washizu, like, are you evil? He would be like, well, I mean, yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, and if you asked Kazuya, are you evil? He would be like, nah, man, I mean, 
if I was, I wouldn't care, but nah, I'm just, I'm just doing this for the fun of it, you know? I'm not, I'm doing it for my greater purpose, you know? They wouldn't explicitly outright deny it, I don't think. They might, like, like, hedge around it, but I, I think if you even ask them straight up, like, are you evil, they might give you kind of, like, a, an answer approaching a yes, <laughs> in some sense. So... Before, before I, I'm gonna come back to Vashizu again, but Sonic, aren't you forgetting that um, some people have, like, mental diseases, that they have, like, schizophrenia, that they're, like, hallucinating, that they they see other stuff, like, if somebody is born with a, with a damage, not damage, but, like, with a sick brain, which just doesn't work, as you call normal people, um... And if they do something terrible, is is that still evil? Well, I would say that those are like special cases. Um, it's... Yeah, but like mass murderers are are also like special cases. Like, like not not like it's very very rare and exceptional. Um, I mean, don't ever get me wrong. I never meant to say that I'm accusing any of their actions. I, I despise their actions. Right. But in, instead of looking that they had a choice in their brain to 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 decide to, to join humanity or be against humanity, that they were just sick. They just didn't, they, they didn't see the world the way we do, they just saw it in the wrong way, and that's I, just... Sh okay, so I would say that, like, if you have a certain level of uh, mental, like, deficiency in your brain, then, like, that's... that is excusable, right? And that's why we have, in America at least, the uh, not guilty by reason of insanity plea, Right? Because, like, if, if you're just so mentally, like, out there that you can't even justify, like, whether something's right or wrong, you don't even know whether something's right or wrong, um, then, then that can potentially be an excuse for, like, you to not really understand, like, the, the outcomes of your actions. But I would say that those are, it, it's really hard to really to really see like you have to what am i even trying to say there there's like it, it, those it, people yeah, I, I got, I got, and there's i got another, I got another question um, okay sure so, so 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 the way i got it do you believe that somebody consciously with a healthy brain makes steps in life where they just end up as this monster um I believe they it can happen, yeah. I I, th I think it can happen. I think you can get so wrapped up in your head, especially if you don't talk to people. Especially if you just kind of, like, get wrapped up in your own brain and you just, like, kind of think of the deepest, darkest thoughts that you want. You can kind of train yourself to, like, get to a certain level, even without a, like, messed up brain, necessarily. Um... I feel like, you know, like, it's not impossible for a person with a, like, there's, like I said before, there's justifications for, like, everything you do. Like, maybe it's a, it's a crime of passion or something, and, like, once you've committed that crime of passion, then after that, you're like, well, whatever, like, I've already crossed the line, now I can do whatever I want. Or, like, you just give in to some deep, dark urge that you have, um... And, like, that kind of, like, it, it sickens you, but you, like, keep going with it anyway. Or something like that. I, th I feel like there's a, just a point that you cross where there's just no turning back, even with a perfectly healthy mind. And your point about, like, like can someone with a, like, a healthy brain, like, get there? I mean, people have. And, like... You know, I think the telltale sign is if they they are capable of like, you know, manipulating people and like, you know, they're they're trying to like get out of it and they're like 
you know, if if you if you're ever interested in that kind of thing, like there's there's like people out there who have been documented that have like done horrible things and yet they seem perfectly adjusted, you know? So it can happen and you can cross that line where you go from being a good person to an evil person and it just it it happens. I I know I I like I don't know why, but I can personally never imagine my, imagine myself like hurt, hurting somebody sure. else. Sure, yeah, it's it's hard for anybody to imagine like one before, you know, they get into a certain mindset where they're where they're capable of doing it and they feel justified in doing it. Almost, it's 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 something that builds up very very slowly, and I feel like most people, you know, they that's why it's so so reprehensible is the fact that you know someone can do something like that like it's just a, a normal person's mind just can't even understand it but the person who did it they have justifications and excuses and like all sorts of reasons why why they got there and they kind of feel like well the world just doesn't understand me and like you know i i did this because it's like it's justified in my mind and like, you know, you can punish me for it, but like, you know, I still feel like it was like, you know, justified and like, you know, you, you can't look at a person like that and say, well, you're right. You know, you, you know, you did kill that guy, but you know, you had an excuse for it. So we're just going to let you go. Right. Like if, if somebody freaking, I don't know, killed somebody, you know, like, would you want to go up to the per to the killer and like listen to their life story and like ask them, okay, why did you do this? Oh, you you had a troubled childhood. Okay, well you're you know you're okay. Like you're free to go. No, like because they did something that was so reprehensible. They took someone that you cared about and erased them from the world for something for a selfish reason, right? And you know you can't look at a person who did does something like that and you can't look at them you and excuse them based on like their troubled childhood or um you know the ju justifications that they bring to you you have to look at a person and be I like well that. you did something you did something that was really really awful and i'm sorry but you gotta go you know so yeah of course there, there, there's going to be consequence like like in everything in life everything you do has a consequence um and you asked me if I would um, look at a person who murdered somebody I loved uh, and ask them like, "Hey, what's what? Hey, what's troubling you? Why did you do this?" I would never talk to them. I would never approach them. But I would not seek revenge or vengeance, or I, I wouldn't try to get back to them. I would just be like, "All right, a, a sick person or a like very deranged person." did something to, i would i would look at it more like a natural like a catastrophe a uh, natural I, okay yeah. that's interesting okay so you, you're saying you would like you would kind of see it as more just you know some crazy guy did something and like it's none of your business almost because I I can't help them. I, I like what am I like? What can I? What what good would 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 it bring if I if I like threaten this person or if I like? No, you, well, you don't have to tre threaten them. That's what the uh, criminal uh, justice what, system is for. What, what what good would it do if I if I hated them for the rest of my life? Um, um, instead of just looking at it like a a. a, a like a thunder hitting my beloved one and dying tragically not because this person needs to be um fucking like tortured or or i need to like bring my revenge i need to like bring you pain back i just look at them like sad sad and sick people i see well I mean, I kind of understand um, the – so I would say, though, that it's important to kind of treat these people that have done these horrible things the way that we treat them now or else, you know, because, because of what I mentioned earlier, like once you've crossed that threshold, it becomes easier for you to recommit, you know, um, and uh, 
it's it's not as simple as just like like I I understand the sentiment of just like let the criminal justice system deal with them and don't like like resent them in your mind. Um it's just how do I put it? It's it's just important to recognize that what they did was wrong, immoral, and, like, like you can't, like, if everybody was, like, justified and excused for everything they did, like, society as it is now would not exist. Because that's the difference between humanity and other species, right? Like when a, <laughs> like when a freaking uh, a lion is ripping out a gazelle's throat, uh, like after chasing it down and um, killing it, the li the gazelle doesn't look at the lion and be like, "Oh, this is a really evil lion," right? It doesn't look up and be like, "Oh, this is a, you know that's just that's just the animal kingdom. That's how they are," right? Um, <clears throat> so I would say that the concept of evil. The concept that we have of evil is inherently what ha one of the things that has enabled us to progress as a human species the way that we have is that we recognize what is wrong and what is immoral and we punish the people that do those things and then so like society as a whole can pr get progressively more good um, because it's important that we become more good of course, of in order to advance our human species. Of course, of course. Of course, you have to, you have, like, it's, like, as you said, uh, we wouldn't be here if uh, we wouldn't be angry about these, um, um, I don't know, how, like, like, these people who are bringing harm to society, like, if we didn't, like, punish them, if we didn't bring, like, fear to society and tell them, like, um, if you do this bad thing, if you cheat, lie, steal, kill, you're gonna get like of course, of course, it brought us where it is. But it's funny because you're the Christian one. You're the Christian one, and mm. I'm the one now thinking about this um, uh, possibility of somebody kill killing somebody I love. And um, honestly, even though you're you're the Christian one, I'm the one who would not like hate them i would look down on them and i'm not saying and... i would freaking like you know despise them every moment of my life either i'm saying you know i would see what they did and i would like you know understand it and i would you know eventually learn to like forgive them and that's what a lot of people do that is the right thing to do you know i'm not i'm not saying that it's it's you know it's like do, forgiveness do you know, do you is know? Do you know the, the, do you know right the power do. of do you know the power of um forgiving instead of seeking vengeance and trying to hurt, harm this person like the power of just like looking down at them as like sad little existences which never experienced friendship love like just looking down on them and, and just like this this epic feeling just like being you know your little pathetic ex existence i forgive you just like go away right isn't it powerful it is isn't powerful it, what... no i i agree with you yeah it is powerful f to um like forgive someone for it, it, you really have to look at it as on, on a case-by-case -case basis like <sighs> It is it is interesting with Kazuya because you can see in him like the desire to change. You can see in him the like want to be a better person, to want to be proven wrong, to want to come out on the other side and like change his ways and stuff. And the power of forgiveness, like like Ryson said, like the the fact that Kaiji saves him in the end despite all of the like wicked things that he's done. Um, the, the fact that he saves him in the end does show that, like, he's willing to forgive him and he's willing to see him for more than just being evil, you know, and, and, like, just wanting to resent him or whatever it is, you know. Well, then you should listen more to Kaiji because you're the one who, who, who is labeling, uh, Kazuya evil and you obviously despise him after i don't uh, despise I do. him that's the thing i just don't want like it's not it's not like i'm s standing here like um like saying that like you know kazia is like 
impossible. Like, he clearly has, like, the potential for change. I'm just saying that, like, you can't, you can't look at him and, like, you can't look at his actions and be like, oh, that's, that's fine, you know, that's not evil, you know? The Kazuya that, like, did all of those things, that Kazuya is evil, but the Kazuya, the potential, like, hopefully, the Kazuya that appears later, maybe in the future of the manga, as a changed person, that Kazuya will be, like, a good person, and it's just, like, it can happen in real life, too. It can happen, like, you know, that someone does something like that, and then they come to terms with it, and they realize, they, I, th oh, here's, here's an important thing, though. They have to understand that what they did was wrong, right? They have to understand that what they did was immoral, or else they'll never come to the realization that they have to be a better person, because if they never get it through their heads that what they did was wrong, then they'll never, they'll never come out as a good person as a result of it. So again, the distinction of, like, this is evil is important. It's important for them to realize that their actions were evil, and so that they can make themselves not evil anymore. But, you know, you know I, I, think, I, think, I think the best way to show these people that, um, as you say, it's evil, um, is by acting a different way than they expect. Uh, somebody who did something wrong, somebody who who hurt other people or did terrible things, is probably expecting like some kind of like retribution. They're expecting like somebody to punish them, and I think if if you if you bring them like to a chair and and explain to them like for two hours like you're evil, this is why you're evil, stop being evil. They'll <laughs> they'll just ignore it. But, yeah. But 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 if you act in a way they don't expect, like with, as we talked about, like forgiveness, like, like you are sick, you are disgusting, and I'm not going to try to hurt you, or I'm not going to try to lecture you. I just like forgive and think about that while you're in prison, and that's like some some nugget that might turn their brain around. Right. Otherwise, I don't see like, lecturing or, or persecuting people will ever change anything in their brain. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's like you have to... Um, th this is something that my Christian friend talks to me all the time about, is if you hear s someone talking about something that's like, you know, they have justifications for things that they're doing, but you know that it's wrong, then you have to speak truth to them. You have to, like... You can't... You can't treat them like they're garbage, right? You can't, you know, like, just dismiss them. That's what a lot of people do, is that they they just kind of, like, you know, ignore them and, like, throw them throw them under the bus and just be like, well, you're, you're beyond saving. But um, what you have to do is you have to find someone who's, like, if you find someone who's like that, you have to, like, listen to them and then be like, okay, well, that's not right. Let me explain to you the truth, you know? Uh, and you have to... Um, you, you have to treat them like a, a human being and you have to see the humanity in them. And that's the only way they're going to change is if somebody tells them about that. And it would be nice if uh, if we had more of a system like that for rehabilitating criminals. You know, if we if we were able to, like, see eye to eye with them and, like, have them understand why they're there, you know, why they got to where they are, but also give them the um, understanding that, uh, you know, that there is potential for change. And it's not like, it, I think that's, that is one good thing about the American criminal justice system is that, you know, there is potential for um, rehabilitation and uh, parole and all of this stuff. You know, we don't just like say, like, you know, you don't just like put them in prison for the rest of their life. Like, you give them a chance to atone for what they've done, to understand what they did was wrong and evil, and then, like, like if you, if, if they come to you and they express, like, genuinely that what they, that they are sorry for what they did and they, they are, are a changed person now, then they can get out. I would say the problem then is that, you know, people in prison typically don't talk to each other about that type of stuff very often. 
So I don't know, but it's 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 just the the concept of um forgiveness does exist. I, it's it's I, not I, the best it could be, yeah, but it does I'm, exist. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm I'm gonna be a little bit like crazy and off topic for a, for a second, but I think the biggest problem with with um, these people which are deranged and which cause harm and as as I said, like there are definitely some people who definitely need to be like taken special care of, um, which are sick in the brain. Um, but otherwise, I think our society right now, like the whole world, doesn't understand that you can you can change people with kindness um, because most most of all systems in the world like fighting crime it's all about like threatening punishing um and they're prepared for it and they're prepared for like uh, you're gonna go to prison listen to this and listen to this uh, uh, like just try try some kindness it, right. it can actually work and that that's what's going on in in, in sweden in sweden i think that i i think they have the best prison system in the world because they don't like most rehabilitate rehabi help me re rehabilitation re really be rehabilitated people I get it. in yeah. the world because because in their prisons they're not treated like trash and they're not like being spit on all the time yeah um they they receive a little bit of kindness because the the other part of Sweden understands the wrong things they did is because there's something wrong in their brain. So mm. they don't have this, like this feeling like they need to punish them. And at the end of the day, isn't like the job of punishment of like, isn't, isn't, isn't that the job of like God in any religion? Like, mm. shouldn't he punish? Like people punishing other people is kind of mm. sad to me. It's like, Try, try, try to try to listen to them, try to understand them, give them a little bit of kindness. Of course, give them like take them away from other people, take them away from society, but don't like constantly threaten them. And 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 who can who can in their mind like think any proper way if you're constantly being like threatened and and aggression is all you see, right? Uh, yeah, if if you're just surrounded by aggressive uh, by aggression, then you become an aggressive person yourself. You're just adapting to the environment. So it's it's important to like, like as far as I mean, I I I do feel like I do feel like if there's no consequence for things that are wrong and immoral, then people will just do them, right? And like I mean, there is the aspect of, like, a basic morality that is shared among all human beings. But at the same time, like, you know, you have to set that, that like, that th threat of, like, this is what's going to happen to you if you do something like this. You have to, like, make that a, a, a common knowledge among all the people, or else, like, it's going to become more likely for people to give in to their dark urges and commit, and that, commit these atrocities. That's, why, that's, that's, that's where we like disagree again, because I don't think that's the right way. I completely disagree. Okay. What, what would you say would be a better system then? A, a better system would be just more psychology, more medical people, more educated people who who can analyze why they did what they did and not treat these people as like 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 a society where where you don't have to feel that you have to do good stuff just because you're going to get punished if you don't or if if you do bad stuff you're going to get punished but a society where you feel like you want to do you 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 want to do good stuff 
And that's where we disagree because you would think that a lot of people have this urge to be dark and bad and they have to like I don't I don't really think so. I as I said, I just think they had like dark backgrounds. They had terrible probably like trauma traumatic like childhoods. They probably had like a young father beating them every night. They something happened in their life. We were like already talking about it, but like nobody in the core, in their heart, in their spirit seeks out to just cause damage to 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 anybody it's and and we shouldn't like demonize these people and we should just like think like we should look at ourselves and think how did we allow this to happen how did we allow that 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 this person grew up so terribly and had such terrible parent per, parents and cause this harm. I mean, yeah, it would be good if we could. Like, <clears throat> it's important to talk about this stuff because that would be like a really ideal situation is if we could catch these kinds of um, dark urges like before they develop into actual actions and we could like um, counsel these people and like make sure that they understand, um, yeah, make sure that they're telling us like their their thoughts and like what they believe and if if they feel like they're being perse persecuted and like how they like uh, like i feel like you know we are taking more steps towards that direction as a society but at the same time you just like if something like if somebody does commit an, an atrocity like that you can't just you can't just, you know, forgive them. So, like, I under yeah, you're right in one sense. You're right in the sense that we should, like, have more um, counseling and we should try to see these, uh, understand these people and we should try to, like, catch the, um, the dark urges before they become a reality. But once they do become a reality, like, what else are you going to do besides um, punish them? Because they, like... If if you don't do that, then it's just going to set a precedence where it's like, you know, more people can get away with that kind of stuff. And it's just that wouldn't be that just wouldn't be right. We would we would devolve again into like kind of a a, a society of like of animals, really, <laughs> you know, of, of just people that just have no um no sense of like like this is wrong or or, or like m m not just this is wrong but like it's wrong but it's okay if i do it because i won't be punished you know it's just you have to have that kind of system in place or else you're going to enable this kind of thing to happen really yeah man, I'm, I'm a little bit like conceding right now because It, it it has to be like like you're right. It 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 definitely has to be like that. Like you can't just do something terrible and then expect like all of these like kind people. Uh, <laughs> right. You can't expect uh, everybody to understand. Gorgeous, like uh, like it's it's good that people like you do want people to understand like how you got there, and people there are systems in place for people to you know kind of make a case for themselves and like explain how they got there and like. Um, like, uh, reason it out with like a psychologist or or some such. But you know, once the atrocity has com been committed, you can't. It, there's just no going back anymore. You know. So. Yeah. Right. Um. But but the final point I'll make is that I think that um. The biggest problem is probably like family trouble and monetary trouble and bad education. Um, that could be a contributing and, factor for sure, and it's it's. Um, I don't know. This is I'm I'm gonna now go off topic now. And you mentioned um, like how it's kind of like God's job to punish people, 
um, like, you know, after they die. I have a different perception of God. I believe that God is the one that kind of like hears your cries for forgiveness. Like if you genuinely repent for your actions and, and what repent means is not just to like, just say, I'm sorry. It means you say you're sorry and then you change your way of life. If God sees you do that, then from what I read of the Bible in my religion, then, um, he will forgive you and understand what you did and like not punish you for it. Um, but that's definitely like, definitely like in all of these crazy people we talked about, even Kazuya and all the other uh, villains and all the other bad people, they definitely need to be this like sorriness, like, is that even a word like so, sorry net like um sure uh that like they 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 are just like very sorry and you can see it like that definitely needs to be there right you definitely need to see that people are sorry for what they did before you give them another, another chance yeah. um and this podcast has has been like at least half of it has been like about religion. Bad yeah, I, and I anticipated it would be this way. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. It's, it's because of Kazuya. So in the end, um, I want to ask you: after all of the stuff we talked about, what do you actually think about Kazuya? And do you mm. do you see a way that you personally, you personally could like forgive him? Sure. I mean, like, you know, I I do see the Kazuya that we see in the story as evil still. Like, I'm, I, there's just no way for me to, like, really... Like, he's he's the kind of evil that it's, it's like you... You understand how he got there, but it's... Like, I do see the potential in him to be... Um... To come out a better person, like, after he's you know, like, after he's had his encounter with Kaiji, um, I, I think that he's, like, kind of a, a, a person who's just kind of been beaten down and, and just, like, he, he has a false perception of reality that he believes to be true, and, like, once Kaiji has gotten through to him, I think that there is hope for him to become a good person again. Um, and especially if, you know, he talks with a therapist about, like, you know, what happened with his mother and, like, the fact that it was a misunderstanding. And, like, I think that even if he is able to work out that kind of, like, not in his mind, then there's no stopping him from, like, you know, becoming a good person again. Um, I, because, because, because I'm trying to bring this back to Fukumoto, um, and I'm not really sure. Um, was there actually a single character like from the from the bad people from the evil people who actually like did this like hmm. oh who actually were and, like rehabilitated uh, or some such yeah like a change of character was there actually e even one who like just said i'm i'm sorry about all of this and i'm going to change hmm. i'm thinking um Yeah, I don't th I don't think there was. Um I think Kazuya will be will become the first. I do believe that Kazuya will become the first. I think I think all the elements are there for Kazuya to um become a good person in part 7 or whatever it is. But as as we have it now, yeah, I don't think that there has been like a a real like quote unquote evil character who has like rehabilitated themselves typically like evil characters in fukumoto works just kind of like like almost the draw of them is kind of how evil they are you know and that's um it's yeah yeah one of the yeah. things that kind of um but made if, me distance if, if, myself if I, from fukumoto's works for a while if, if i could if i could give a suggestion to fukumoto 
<laughs> of course, I have no connection with him, but if right. I could like just give give a little suggestion, I would be like, make at least one of those characters change. It, it, it's it's kind of hopeful. It's kind of giving a message that you don't have to stay a like loan shark forever. You don't have to right. be an asshole forever. You can you you can change like this. Just this message of change is possible, as he did yeah. in Kurosawa. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. It I th- and I think he will. I think he. W- I think Kazuya is is a character that he's going to do that with. Um, I don't know when. I don't know how. But uh, I think Kazuya is going to come back, and uh, he's going to be a different person because he he has had time to think about what Kaiji said to him, and he has time to like really realize like, oh my god, like that was a real genuine human being, like a real nice good person that i just encountered like he could have just let me die but he didn't he saved me and i think that alone will change kazia and make him like reevaluate all of his beliefs about the world um i i i I have to hope that that's what fukumoto is going for you know and i do believe that that's what fukumoto is going for i can see that I can see yeah. that Fukumoto is very smart. Obviously, um, even though I started this 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 stream with a uh, very a little bit of like prejudice and like I was gonna complain about part three for uh, like hours, but <laughs> then I realized when I, when I talked to you, I realized actually it's not not bad. Actually, this guy does know what he's doing. Um, so I have the same hope. Uh, he's just a victim of uh, the publishers who are trying to stretch it out, but he does he does know what he's doing. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, and I've kind of in talking to you, I've kind of like you know like really kind of reevaluated my sense of like you know before I uh, like when I started this podcast, I was just kind of like all I had was like oh like once you cross a certain threshold, you're just evil. But talking to you, I kind of have kind of realized you know that's not the end you know it's not like once you turn evil there's no going back you know it takes a lot it takes a complete reevaluation of your entire in, entire uh uh psychology to like you know turn around and become a good person again but it definitely is possible and people have done it and people will continue to do it and i think kazia is going to do it so yeah. yeah i think i think my, my my favorite my favorite part of the podcast when we talked about how all of these crazy insane evil people they need somebody to 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 tell them um it was some something i i wasn't really ready to talk about but yeah now i realize whoever is listening to us even though you're afraid you're just gonna get ignored or rejected just like be nice people and uh, that's a well sure yeah i mean like uh, like this is yeah this discussion is a very extreme example of a very simple concept which is like if if you're like if if you find yourself being mean to people if you find yourself just constantly surrounded by um by hatred and like you know people being mean to you and you want to retaliate with that like i would say just go out and find some nice genuine good people because they they're out there and you just have to look for them and then once you do or or even just be just start being nicer yourself and then you'll make the people around you be that much nicer you know and you'll make like cuz you are like you are the way you act uh, is one way of putting it i don't know if that's the best way but <laughs> uh like it, like if you enact kindness on the world then kindness will eventually come back at you like you know people around you might make fun of you for being so so kind but really if you just keep at it you know eventually kindness will reciprocate back to you and um you know it, on the other hand if you just continue to be mean and nasty all your life then all you're gonna do <laughs> is just be mean and nasty and uh 
<laughs> Dylan from work comes to mind. <laughs> he's, he definitely will never listen to this podcast. So, but he's the type of person that just like, he assumes that like everybody that comes into subway is going to be a mean, nasty person. Right. And that they're just going to not like him. And so he preemptively is rude to them and that makes them rude to him. Whereas like someone, someone like me, you know, like people do come in that are rude and I just kind of ignore them. And then people that are genuinely nice, I like, I reciprocate that niceness. And then we have a pleasant interaction, you know, that's the way it works. You know, you can't just, just get it in your head that the entire world is evil. The entire world is like mean and nasty. You have to like seek out the good parts of humanity and then you have to um, reciprocate that niceness to them. <laughs> that my, my little subway analogy might have been a little apropos of nothing, but no, it was great. <laughs> it, it it was great. It was great. Um, and I I think may, maybe you don't agree with me, but I think the message is like, um, if you're nice to people and if you're just a nice person in general, you might get some bullshit from time to time, but then you will meet this other nice person and you will have the best time ever. So Right. It's it's so much think... more fun to be around nice people than just to treat every, treat or to to be with somebody that treats you like trash, you know, and you feel like you have to reciprocate back. And I and I think people take it too too personal, too seriously when they encounter an asshole at work, um in life, they and everybody's encountering assholes all the time, and they take it too personally when they get some like bad reaction from them. But don't forget, good people exist. Sonic said this in the in the in the first podcast, and he's absolutely right. Don't forget that good people exist. Stay being nice and good, and it will pay off. Just be patient. Right. Yeah, neither of us would have said this like five years ago, right? Neither of us would have like um, seen the world this way. But I think we're both changed people now. And, you know, we both have come to the realization that we just discussed that like there are good people, there are nice people in the world, and you just have to seek them out. Yeah, and exactly like look at it, look at it like Sonic said. If somebody is an asshole, if somebody is mean to you, um, just see them like they that they didn't really like grow up in a way, um, and don't take them too seriously. And you will meet nice people. Me and Sonic, I hope I can say this. We became mm -hmm. nice over the time. Yeah. So, <laughs> is is this, is is it too far fetched to say that? <laughs> that we became um, nice over time? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I kind of went through a period of my life where I was uh, a little arrogant and, like, um, I didn't really treat people with the utmost kindness. So, yeah. Yeah, we can say that, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, we be we've I become nice over time, for sure. Yeah, because I I was I was the same because I was also an asshole on the internet. Uh, I was I was hating on people. I was hating on everybody. And but you need then you meet somebody nice, and then you learn there's actually a nice way to look at the world. You don't have to be so pessimistic. So. Um, you don't have to to assume that everybody's gonna screw you up. Like some of them are gonna probably try to screw you, but there are people who are not. There are people who are just gonna enjoy talking to you and having some fun time with you. Right. And I I know that this kind of sounds like a freaking like moral like you know one of those corny Aesops, but it's 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 really true. <laughs> You know, it's really it really is the way that the world is, is that if, you know, and it makes you feel better as a person, like if you just go through your life just feeling down in the dumps, like hating everybody, like you're going to like have so many emotions bottled up inside that you're not going to be able to really enjoy your life. You know, if but it, on the other hand, if you like 
go out there and you seek out the nice people and you kind of tolerate the not so nice people, then when you interact with those nice people, then like it kind of like frees you and makes you um, a lot more, um, a lot happier really is the bottom line, you know, just it makes you happier as a result of you um, making other people happier. It, it you know, it's all about that cooperation we were talking about. You cooperate to make each other happy, right? It's that's what it's all about, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You put it in a perfect way. Um, before we uh, wrap up, close this um, podcast. Um, I have a question for anybody who is listening. Um, not right now, let's say on YouTube or, or after the show, um, because this episode was very different. Um, first, second, third episode, we were like very focused on the, on the like creative things and yeah. we were focused on and just being, Akagi, geeking Akagi. out over the manga, really. <laughs> yeah. And this episode, um, because me, like both Sonic and me, we were not super well prepared because as i said i didn't read all of uh that and roku i didn't manage to read it all i tried i didn't manage it's, it's long it takes time to read a chapter um so in this in this podcast we talked about some philosophical stuff about some our opinions uh and i guess the only thing i want to hear from anybody is if that's acceptable or if in the future we should just stay on the topic and stay on Kaiji or Kirinji or whatever we're going to talk right. about Kurosawa. Or rather, if, if, yeah, I mean, if you enjoyed hearing us discuss about this stuff or if you'd rather just we stick to like the content of the manga. Yeah, so any any comment any anywhere <laughs> Uh, would be nice because we still don't know for the next week where we're gonna wrap up with Kaiji. Um, next Saturday, we don't know if this was like too much, like us talking about the criminals, <laughs> religion. <laughs> yeah, it, it was, we did go into some pretty deep, dark subjects. Um, and I don't know, that might might have driven some people off so. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it, we are still learning, like, what, we, what, like, cause it was worth testing out, though, right? To see if, like, this kind of, like, discussion on philosophical concepts is something that people are receptive to. Or if, like, you know, it, it's kind of a trial and error type of thing. It's, it's not like, you know. Yeah, because I don't know we, doing, we, but... we, no, 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 it's fine. It's because, we weren't like we are honest with the audience, and I hope that's something you like to hear. We're completely honest. Um, we weren't a hundred percent ready for this episode. Uh, yeah, Sonic. yeah. I, I mean, I, uh, I kind of pretty much talked about everything that I wanted to talk about, that I was like preparing to talk about, that I was rehearsing to talk about. Um. But, uh, yeah, I mean, going into this episode, I wasn't even sure if I really wanted to do it because my mind is preoccupied with something else at the moment. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, that, that's what I want to say. Sonic, um, is thinking about other stuff in his life, he is his own life, and I didn't manage to, to read that and Roku and like find some details which you might have missed like find find something that that's yeah. interesting like oh I, I never know i didn't manage to sonic has other things to think about uh but still we want to do this podcast um so don't be shy tell us let us know you like any like really, honestly, any feed like even if you say like, can you stop talking about uh, religion? <laughs> we're gonna take it and we're gonna say, yeah, okay, we're gonna stop talking about religion. <laughs> um, right. So just feel free, just feel free to write whatever you thought about this. Um, 
yeah, and it, and I mean, uh, it'll just be uh, like, do you think that we're going to like continue talking about Kaiji in the next episode? Because like, uh, I feel like like even if we tried to extract more from uh, like parts four, five, six, and even three, like, is there really that much more to go into? Because I feel like the the bulk of part four and five was delving into Kazuya's character. And I feel like that's what this entire episode practically was about, was diving into Kazuya's character and, and rationalizing the morality of what he was doing. Um, I feel yeah, like, I mean, so I, I don't yeah. know. We could probably talk about part six a little bit, <laughs> but is there really even that much to talk about? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I'm I'm kind of surprised that we managed to cover uh, Kazuya's, like, especially like his psychology. <laughs> um, <laughs> it it brought us into a direction we didn't expect, but I think it turned out fine. Unless, like, people didn't like it. If they didn't like it, as I said, just let us know. Um, but about Kaiji. We can do we can do a combo episode like next week where we start off finishing Kaiji because there's still a little bit like we didn't get into one poker hand too much. We didn't get into 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 um that kind of stuff with the Asian trio especially. I had something to say about the Asian trio with uh, we can like we can make it half half like Half of the episode, it's uh, Kaiji, and, like just wrapping everything up, talking about the last scenes we have something to say about, and then um, we do half of the other episode, just Kurosawa, because Kurosawa is also also waiting. Yeah, we could do that. And and there's 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 not not so much to talk about in Kurosawa. I mean, there's like. Like it's not something which takes three episodes. It's something which you can talk about. Like I'm not belittling it. I'm not saying it's yeah. bad in any way. I'm saying it's uh, it's it's not can, as long can... for one thing. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can cover it in like half an episode. I assume. I hope. And if not, we could just make it three hours, <laughs> like because we have no set time limit. So. Yeah, I'd be I'd be down for that. All right. All right. Um, one comment. One comment. Well, T Tamver said we could talk about part six, and then Rissen said uh, make an episode about what you think will happen in Kaiji. I mean, we talked about what we think will happen with Kazia in Kaiji. Um, but I guess there would be uh, we didn't talk about the other characters necessarily. But I also think that it would be interesting because. Uh, you you have the you have like background and <laughs> um because people are kind of anxious like what's going to happen in kaiji right now so yeah then oh god kaiji <laughs> there's so much about kaiji <laughs> we, we will we <laughs> i mean it's a legendary we, 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 series for a reason you know there's just so much there's so many arcs that Kaiji goes through, like not only just like literal arcs of the manga, but also just arcs as a character. Um, so, you know, there's just so many um, things to talk about and so many different people that he interacts with. And, you know, um, it's understandable. Okay, we have another comment. Um... Favorite Mahjong movie TV series? Uh, Mukobuchi. All of, all the movies. They're they're kind of uh, dull and repetitive, but uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. They have such a lovely charm to them. <laughs> and I also guess there's something personal why you like it. And then I have to definitely reread it because I can't like remember almost a single thing about about Mukobushi. <laughs> oh well yeah. it's it's one of those series that is just like 
it has good moments and bad moments. Like, it's kind of, like, predictable for a lot of the time, but then you get, like, these really amazing characters that are just, like, like they have so much personality and they're so fun to, like, watch play. And then there's, you know, you get little nuggets of, like, oh, this was a cool little gambit that he did or, like, something like that. It's, it, it's not the kind of series that, you know, is good from beginning to end and you just, like, like love all of it it's it's the kind of series that you kind of like it's it's designed to be a weekly series so it's it's like it's designed so that you like tune in for an arc and then you like maybe skip a few and tune in for another arc it and i feel like they did adapt some of the best arcs into the movies although <laughs> i i do feel like they messed up mizuhara's character <laughs> my avatar <laughs> uh i don't know if i if you want to hear about that but Yeah, I'm also not very sure right now. Um, yeah, because we're just wrapping up anyway. This is like the end, so it's not like we should go into a whole nother topic. But uh, yeah, I mean, he was saying I, that we should make an episode about that, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I could gush about Mukobuchi but... for a while. I could like to tell you all about like what I love about Mukobuchi that you haven't read yet because it hasn't been translated. <laughs> um, I don't know. That would be fun. Yeah, there's so much to talk about, and I would have to reread what's translated and maybe look into the the raws a little bit myself. Um, and then I could maybe hold up a conversation about uh, Mukobuchi with you. <laughs> um but it, that's just the proof that that there's so many so many things we 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 can talk about don't for, don't forget Kirinji don't forget of course, those yeah. things um yeah you were saying that you wanted uh, to do like a multi-part series on Kirinji definitely because i have so much to say about Kirinji like it's probably going to be just like 5 hours of me talking about it <laughs> Probably because I was the one translating it. Um, yeah, I don't remember I've, too much about. It. I'll I'll have to reread some of that. Oh, we wanted to do uh, Akira, right? We want uh, you wanted to talk about Akira at one point. Oh my God! There's even Akira. There's so much to talk about, but today we just like kind of strayed away and just like went to the philosophy stuff and. <laughs> uh, Moral, moral philosophy, um, religion. We just went off there because we weren't a hundred percent prepared for. Today. Well, it's not that we weren't a hundred percent prepared. I was planning on going here anyway. Like this is where I wanted to take it, you know, and that's why I took it there. You know, it 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 wasn't like I freaking went in with no idea what I was going to talk about, and then like we wound up here. It was like I I kind of planned my. Uh, my statements like planning to go here because i thought it would be interesting to talk about and maybe it wasn't <laughs> and i would i would like to hear um people's feedback on whether it was interesting or not but uh time will tell if uh people thought it was interesting me personally i honestly like enjoyed listening to you talking about like uh, kazuya and the way you look at them for for me at least, it 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 was enjoyable even as a co 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 host co co cast and yeah. co whatever. Um, I I I found it pretty interesting to listen to you. Um, we were a bit lo like a little bit like re repetitive. Do you think? I think I'm not sure. Uh, I f I feel like we were just delving After deeper I... and deeper and deeper into the um like philosophy of like what is good and evil and like because that's something that people um found interesting about the first episode is where we kind of briefly touched on that and i just kind of wanted to take a deeper dive in it this episode i don't know if anyone else like saw it that way but well this video will be on youtube so whoever listens please write us your feedback we don't have enough feedback we <laughs> don't really know how well we're doing we're looking at some numbers sometimes we look at the views sometimes we look at how many people like wrote something but we're not really sure don't feel shy write us do you want us to be more on topic with the manga 
Yeah, or and is it? And, pe- and people, or, or do you enjoy our our philosophy talk? Yeah, yeah. Pe- people out there, you you know, just like let us know, like, because I just want to. I don't know. I I feel like this should have been interesting, and if it wasn't, I want to know why. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, maybe we just rambled on too much. Could be that. I think we touch on some very, like, very deep philosophy about, like, life itself and stuff like that. But um, I'm just afraid that some people might be turned off because it's it wasn't so much about that in Roku, actually, about Kaiji. Hmm. It was half, like, 50, 50% um, covering, like... Um, how Kaiji got into it, uh, Muraoka and 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 some stuff like that, and then after we start talking about uh, Kazuya, we just like talked about American <laughs> American criminal legal. justice reform. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's cr- yeah, it's crazy how we can. Go- it's crazy. It's interesting. I don't know. That's just where it wound up going, though, and it's like that's what kind of what a podcast is about in my eyes is like, you know, you just go where you want to go, where the conversation takes you and you don't have to like limit it down. Or at least I hope not. <laughs> Maybe you do. I don't know. I've, I've never done a podcast before, but that's my image of what it should be. But anyway, we've been uh, rambling about, um, we've been, we've been trying to wrap up this show for a while and we probably should. Don't you think? I guess the prob- I guess I guess the problem is why it's so hard to wrap up the show is because I get I I I hope I actually hope that we enjoy talking to each other. And oh wait, you you hope that uh, I enjoy talking? Is that what you're saying? Because I enjoy talking. I love talking to you. <laughs> all right, all right. Then that's the reason why it's hard to wrap up. Then <laughs> yeah, it's just. This this is this is whatever. We don't have to say it on stream, but like this happens a lot, <laughs> where you you like get in your head that like the person talking to you doesn't like to you and uh, like you, and it, it's 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 a dilute. It's is like a fabrication a lot of the time. Like because I've you know I I enjoy talking to you and like <laughs> it just is what it is. I think it was a good podcast i don't think you can hear stuff like that anywhere else um so <laughs> yeah that's kind of why i want to go into it because i love talking about this kind of stuff and uh we'll see <laughs> we'll see if people like hearing about it or if they just want us to keep talking about it's it. just the four it's just the fourth episode so yeah we're still figuring this stuff out more. so yes any feedback is greatly appreciated but uh for now, I think we should probably go. <laughs> we should let the people go. As let as you let the people go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, so everybody, um, again, <laughs> the, I'm gonna sound like a little. I, I'm, um, a, anybody <laughs> listening to the podcast episode four? Thank you so much. Um, really, th- thank you. Like. We're not just saying it because we have to say it. It's it's really just thank you. It's great knowing that people are uh, listening to us. It's great knowing that some people wrote me and and asked when's the ne- next podcast. I'm so glad people enjoy it. Um, and we're gonna keep doing it. We're we're not gonna give up. Um, and let's see where where it takes us and. So, yeah, so, so, everybody, thanks again for listening. Um, and have a good day or evening or night or morning, whatever. Just have a great day. Thank you. And you will see us again or listen to us again next Saturday. Yes. Hopefully, on the at the correct time. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, not hopefully, it will be.
Yeah. I think. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah, th- thanks again. It, like he said, yeah, thanks a lot for... Thanks for a lot. Thanks a lot for listening to us. I really do hope that you enjoyed this podcast. Um, it really does mean a lot that like a lot of people are tuning in and listening. So, thanks for me as well. And thank you, Sonic. And thank you. As Richard. I said, have a good, have a good morning, afternoon, <laughs> day, or evening or night. Just enjoy yourself. And have a good time, everybody. Indeed. Everybody have a great um, day. (laughs) Or whatever. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) See you later, everybody. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye now.